So, Mark, we all have heard uh, that uh, Channel 9 decided to pull the pin on regular appearances by the Federal Leader of One Nation, Pauline Hanson, of course, uh, you know, desperately offended at everything that uh, uh, she had to say about, uh, 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 about lockdowns and some of the people in Housing Commission, but more importantly, the point that she was making, of course, about um, well, the multiple languages and the need to translate uh, messages, of course, means that you're not getting key health information. That's, of course, what she was saying on television. But we know that this is the, 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 the broader trend inside the media, right, which is to turn around and you, as you experience as a person running for office, um, you know, if you're running for office and you're Zali Stegall, they'll have you on every show in the world. If you're Mark Latham and you're running for office in a New South Wales election, no, no, you're not allowed on at all. That's right, yeah, try, try getting on the ABC. But, you know, what's happened to Pauline is indicative of what's going on. There's now a downgrading of democratic legitimacy. The fact that you've been elected by the people, you've been elected senator, to articulate an opinion. And for Nye to turn around and say, oh, no, we don't like that, and she's banned because she was divisive. Did they watch A Current Affair for 40 years? <laughs> which is sort of ripping the country in half and picking up the, the biggest part for their commercial purpose. I mean, that, that, that side of it is laughable. It's a, it's a, it's a non-excuse. And it reminds me very much of the woke corporate executives who say, I won't advertise on a certain radio or TV platform. It's not because they're spooked by mad witches and other cat people, you know, 20 <laughs> people with multiple accounts on Twitter. That's just a pathetic alibi for the truth that these detached woke corporate elites are throwing their own way, are totally unelected, totally unaccountable, are throwing their own weight around to basically say, as media executives, we don't like that opinion, so that person's off. Yep. Or as corporate executives, we don't like that opinion, it doesn't wash at our dinner parties and, and I'll be embarrassed, uh, mm. people will hop into me at the eastern suburbs dinner party. So we, we'll pull the advertising and, and force that, that person out. Now, th this is one of the... Um, evil consequences, and I, I don't use that lightly, evil consequences of identity politics, where these corporate executives have been allowed to push this line and throw their weight around and, and ban this person and withdraw this advertising here. All the meanwhile, Labor and the Greens have been sucked into this in thinking that th these identity activities are valid, while all these corporations are still ripping off the workers. Absolutely. You know, the banks, 99.9% .9 of their staff, ripping off the customers, 0.1% working in a diversity and inclusion unit, so oh, the left side, oh, that's great, they're doing something about race, gender and, 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 and sexuality uh, equality. This is what, you know, um, old lefties used to call false consciousness. Labor and the Greens have been conned into this particular paradigm and the corporate executives are laughing their heads off yeah. because no one, no one's examining how they actually run their company, the workers and the customers they're ripping off and they've got this false um, veneer of uh, being uh, nice people on race, gender and sexuality and, um, and, and, and the main game is being missed completely. They are laughing at Labor and the Greens have been sucked into this and there should be scrutiny on these people for what they're really up to. It's undemocratic, it's unaccountable and it's a personal view that's been used in throwing their money around that's just plain wrong. I couldn't agree more, Singh and Sister, because it's like, to me, Nicholas... Again, the issue here is, is that I think if you're an elected member in an Australian parliament, then you have a right to be interviewed, OK? You have a right to have a regular spot. And, but what happens with an idea you don't like is rather than ban the person, contest the idea confront the idea. Instead, part of sort of the, 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 you know, the glitter giggle of the past couple of days has been, oh, you know, she should never have been given a platform in the first place. And if we can limit the number of platforms these awful people are in, then somehow the voters uh, will somehow forget what they actually think. Look, I think Channel 9 made the right decision by yeah. uh, taking uh, Pauline Hanson off, off that program and giving her that platform. There's plenty of other people out there who hold worldviews similar to hers and, and, frankly, could put those views in a far more articulate and less divisive and offensive way than she does. Mark Latham on your program tonight is, is one of those people. But I, I, sadly, I think Pauline has got uh, an appalling history here. I mean, remember, she was on Channel 7 there for a couple of years, but she got taken off because of some pretty appalling she, things she said at the time Channel 7, the, because David uh, Koch accused her of being responsible for the, the, uh, the mosque massacre in New correct, Zealand. Correct, correct. Yeah, that's that's, right, that's why she left. That's pretty offensive thing she said no. about the massacre no, of a white no, woman no. which involved a white supremacist no. going into a mosque. What did she say about and, the massacre? Yeah, what did she what, say, What did Nick? she say and, 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 that was then, offensive then, about the and, massacre? And then as for the comments she made uh, this week, which were about people who I represent in Melbourne, 
they were divisive and offensive as well. I mean, to suggest that, you know, be calling these people, you know, uh, uh, drug addicts and immigrants and all these things, blaming immigrants. them immigrants. for the situation right. uh, was I'm very divisive language. Why and are you exactly saying it like this? exactly the thing we don't need at this point, where you've got, frankly, a vulnerable community who are in severe lockdown facing a, a minor humanitarian crisis. So, and all we get from our political leadership is to attack them. No, but... The, so but, so no, I no, think but, Channel 9 was perfectly right to, I, to take her off. Yeah, and, but, but and Mark, Rita, I hope you're on there next week prosecuting a similar worldview, but doing it in a more respectful and, frankly, far more intelligent and articulate way than Pauline does. No, well, Nick, Pauline didn't get kicked off Channel 7 for anything she said about the, the, the massacre in New Zealand. Uh, it was a dispute where I thought, quite wrongly, she was being accused of being responsible. He verbaled her. For that. And, and, and Darren Hinch was part of the, the pile-on. Yep. And, and, and for that reason, she basically told him to jam it. No, I don't blame her for that for one moment. Yep, this is it. I mean, but again, Rita, right, there are things that Green senators say that yeah. are just, like, they're sometimes laughable and sometimes they are just, like, they, they go right into the low rent, right? But there's no part of me that says, oh, they should not be allowed to be interviewed. Anyone who interviews them should be uh, pushed off the air. I mean, that sort of madness that we are living right now, where again, and as, 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 as Mark says about many of these corporates or these TV stations or radio stations, um, the suburbs are just places to sell things. Do your bit. Don't tell us what your opinion is. Don't let anyone reflect what your opinions are. We'll decide all of that. 5Ks well, out Well, they're not even interested in that. They're not interested in the audience reach of a popular program. Yeah. They're interested in just throwing their advertising money around as a lever to try and influence the political debate to match their views. Mm. Now, someone at some point has got to do something about the, the anti-democratic nature of these corporate elites. And I don't know what that framework is, but we've got to hit them hard and, 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 and think about new forms of regulation that pull these people into line. Maybe they should have to declare all this politically motivated advertising money shift that they have because they're trying to influence the debate. Mm. You make a donation to the political system, you're supposed to declare it. Why shouldn't they declare the decisions they make and, 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 and table the reasons why they are shifting advertising money around just be, to influence political views and, 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 and political medium? Good point. Read up. Last but, th word. but that's what happens when you allow the left to hijack every institution and that's what happens when conservatives don't fight the culture wars and think they're above them. We've seen the left's march through public institutions whether we're talking about universities or even primary schools and high schools but now they've really captured the corporate uh, side of, of, of the equation and there is this corporate virtue signalling where uh, people uh, ad use their corporate dollars to advocate a particular position. You look at a program, say, like Tucker Carlson right now, absolutely killing it in the ratings. He is getting ratings that have never been seen in cable news before. Agreed, they're amazing. Uh, outstripping every other program and station. And yet, he has issues getting advertising. Why? Because there are concerted efforts. Every time a new advertiser comes on board, there is a concerted effort to harass that business and what happens uh, here the, every day well they're happy to be harassed here. they're happy to be harassed it's an alibi they, this, tw these twitter campaigns are an excuse they're happy to move their advertising and they just oh some people said something some of it is but, that but, uh, mark i don't think all of it is that i think sometimes they do genuinely get spooked even if they should know that majority of these accounts are fake accounts anonymous accounts there's a small number of people operating them and they're not representative of the wider well, population yeah, re re they get spooked when they get a thousand yeah. emails saying the same things it, so and they're cowards and most corporates are fairly well, are. cowards but i'm just what you read it, you know the orthodoxy is and you said it that the, the the left have captured the corporate elites i'm just wondering is it the other way around the corporate elites are using the left as useful idiots yeah. who have distracted yeah. everyone onto this too. identity politics and PC. Meanwhile, they're still ripping off their workers, still ripping off their customers. They get, don't get anywhere near the scrutiny they used to get in the 80s and 90s. They're sailing their yachts on the weekend, still living in the big house and laughing their bloody heads off about the useful idiots on the left. Yeah. So I just wonder Absolutely what the relationship not. really and, is. And can I just say too... And you look the at reason... Nike, 
you look at someone like Nike, sorry Paul, but that is precisely what they're doing. In Nike, as soon as they became massively woke and virtue signalled about uh, social justice issues, the attention went away about what was happening in the, their sweatshops mm -hmm. in third world countries. You know, that suddenly was no longer a consideration. Remember, exactly. Nike was a highly controversial company because of its pra workplace practices. Look at Apple. Now... Or the uh, Apple's another one. You know, using... Uh, you look at the companies that are madly virtue signalling about Black Lives Matter and all sorts of other issues, yet they're in China using essentially forced labour to make their products cheaply. Yep. Uh, absolutely unprincipled, and yet they get away with it because well, these idiots who pretend to hate capitalism buy their products <laughs> because they think they're good corporate citizens. Uh,